So welcome to Palm Harvest Church, everybody. I'm Pastor Mike Decker with Jim Strode, and today is a special day for all of us. It's a day when Jim, uh, at the young age of 93, unbelievable, uh, is going to make his profession of faith <laughs> in Jesus. He's a rock star. He's got it all right there. So baptism, we're going to take time. I told Jim, I said, anybody who lives 93 years has got a lot of stories to tell. And so we're going to tell some stories. And uh, I just invite you to kind of relax and hear how God has been at work in, in Jim's life. And so let me just kind of set up why we baptize. When we, when we read the Bible, there's a story where Jesus, when he's beginning his earthly ministry at the age of 30-ish, uh, goes to be baptized, uh, baptized by immersion. And, and immersion is, is symbolic, and, and we'll talk about this a little bit later after our, our conversation with Jim today, but baptism is symbolic in the sense where when, we, when you go underneath the water, is, it's as if you're being buried. You know, we've all been to funerals where a casket's been dropped and then, you know, the, the dirt is played over the, t placed over the top of the casket. Symbol symbolically, when we, when we ba are baptized, as we go under the water, it's like we're saying we're dying to our old self. Uh, the sin, the gunk, you know, the choices we've made that maybe we're not excited about, just a life in general, we're dying to ourselves, and as we come up out of the water, it's as, if, it's, it's as if we're resurrecting from the dead, much like Jesus did. And because of Jesus' work on the cross, as, as followers of Jesus, as Christians, we believe that he forgives us and gives us new life. And so the baptism is a symbolic uh, practice that Jesus himself did prior to kind of launching into his earthly ministry. And so as followers of Jesus, we follow in obedience to that, which is what leads us to here today. And so uh, for those of you who are, especially your family and close friends of Jim, we're super glad that you're here, uh, honored that you're here. Uh, Jim and I are going to talk uh, for as long as we, we need to. And then uh, at the place of when we get to uh, when we baptize him and, and the dunking, and you'll you'll see it up on the screen, the, the you know the projector's old. It's it, it's a, not a great scene, but on, those of you tuning online, and for those of you who want to watch later, it's in 4K. It'll be great. Uh, you, you'll, you, I would encourage you to watch it. I want you to when we come when Jim comes up out of the water, I want you to hoot and holler and make as much noise as you possibly can. Please, please. And and uh, at the same time, before as he gets up and as we get ready to, to, to dunk him, if you will, for those of you who are family and who have been a part of a key part of his, uh, Jim's kind of his, his bringing him to this place, I would like you to stand uh, as we uh, as we get to get to that place. So with all that said, uh, Jim, what do you think? The water's not too bad. It's wonderful. I'll tell you more when I get my head under. <laughs> And it's not deep enough, by the way. So I'm not sure, do I have to lie down in this? No. Well, I thought the water would be up here quite high, but it's not. You can't see that, but the level is quite low. My feet are wet. So what, brings, look what, what bring, you do look angelic, yeah. <laughs> what brings us to this place? Tell us, take, tell us about your life. Yeah, a little bit about yeah. my story. I'm not sure they have that much time. But anyway, uh, Jesus and religion have really not been a part of my adult life, but that's changing very soon. You know, my life has really been good. I've accomplished a lot. I have good health, fortunately. And my childhood was a happy childhood. My parents worked. They lived in many different places. We never talked about God. We never talked about religion. My life was very disciplined. But again, it was very happy. My parents moved all over. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, and I don't mean days, I'm talking years. We at that time had a Great Depression, and that depression affected greatly my parents. So during that time also, I got into scouts and sports. I did so because my friends did that. But I did have a beginning with God. I had a son that died of drugs. I had a wife of 63 years, 63 years, who became ill for three years, and I cared for her. I prayed a lot. 
I felt alone and desperate, but I think that the burden that I had changed. My religious journey really began when Norma Jones became a part of my life. Norma Jones believes that Jesus Christ is her Lord and Savior. She lives that way. I've been a witness to that because I've been with her for so many years. So I decided after this experience that I want to be like that. And I want Jesus, and I need Jesus in my life. Then I met Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike is unbelievable. Jot that down in your app notes. <laughs> I want to follow his teachings. When he's here and he gives a sermon, it feels like he's talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. There's such a feeling of closeness during these times. So Pastor Mike, you are my pastor and this is my church. You know, we talk about how uh, church is not a building, it's people. You're the church, I'm the church. When we have Jesus in our life and he's transforming us, it's not an instantaneous perfection pill that we take and all of a sudden we're sin free, right? It's a journey. It's a couple steps forward, one step back. Sometimes we trip and fall. The invitation of following Jesus is you get back up and, and you keep moving forward. And the beauty of, of the Christian faith, is it's, it's her people. It's people like Norma who just, you know, her everyday life of following her relationship with the Lord has an impact as we heard today. And uh, that's true for you too. And maybe you're here today and you're feeling like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a really great person or, you know, I, I had a bad week, maybe you had a good week. But just recognize that your life is having an impact. And uh, I think that the invitation of being a, a follower of Jesus is that uh, people relate better to our messes actually than they do our successes. And you've had a lot of success in your life. Um, what'd you do for work? Let's un before we, before we, you've done a lot with yeah. work, but talk about that a little bit. Well, mostly I've probably built over the years, thousands of mobile homes. I had three factories, built a mobile home park, and then got into modular building, commercial buildings. I did that for, for years and years. So again, with three factories building seven and a half units per week for years and years, if you do the math, that's a lot of homes. We also build a lot of portable classrooms. We were the largest builder of portable classrooms in the state of California. And I retired at the age of 62. And it's been a great journey since, in terms of traveling the world, doing a lot of accomplishments. I've been very involved in various athletic events. But I have a wonderful family. My son and daughter-in-law are here. My great-grandson's here. And Norma, God bless her, she's here. You know, it, it, we, can, we can experience a lot of success in our life, but there's still that hole in our soul, isn't there, <laughs> without, without Jesus? For sure, for sure. You feel like there was a, a moment, you know, we're, we're in this series right now called Legacy. Do you feel like there was a legacy moment that kind of uh, pushed you to the place where you say, you know what, I really need to, I need to invite, move from religion to relationship? Um, every sermon that I've attended here in talking about relationships, uh, the, the members here are, are so fantastic and so friendly and you want to be a part of that family. That's the way Norma and I feel. This is our church. And we feel very, very close and want to continue to come and come and come and get involved in the church and get involved in the activities of the church. We love it and we love you. That's made, that's made a major difference in our lives, really. So. And you've made a major difference in our lives too. Well, yes, would you agree you. with that, church? Thank you. Thank you. All right, you ready?
I guess the value we got to deal with these, though. So, no. There are certain elements of risk involved with this, by the way, aside from drowning. Uh, <laughs> and that has to do with a 93-year-old, most of us have to wear hearing aids. Now, we don't want to wind up being electrocuted, so we have to take the hearing aids out, or I do. So at this point in time, I hear. Now I don't hear. So, all right, and you can, what are you going to do with those? <laughs> don't put them in the water. So anyway, give them to Norma. She's my caretaker of the hearing aids. She'd like to throw them away, but that's okay. All right. <laughs> all right. So hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Look at me. <laughs> okay, I got it. You got me. I was looking at the water. Yeah. Jim, you've shared your testimony with all of us. And family, would you please stand? You shared your testimony with us today. Is Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord? Yes. Yes. And is it your desire to live for him in a, in a way that will honor honor him? Yes. Then for based sure. upon your public profession of faith, I now baptize you, my brother, in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's continue to worship this morning.